Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you some of the string methods in Python. So the reason why I'm doing this is because it's impossible for any one person to know everything that's available in every language and framework that you use and every library that you use. So in this video, what I hope to do is just help you realize that there are some other options for you available in Python if you weren't aware of them already. So if you're already a master of Python string manipulation, then you probably won't get anything out of this video. But if you're curious to know what most of the string methods are, at least the useful ones, then maybe this video can help. So we're gonna start with this string that I have here. I just call it Meister, and we have this sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And what I'll do is I'll simply print out the results of the sentence. So print Meister, and then what I'll do is I'll run it, and we see the sentence gets printed there. So now what we'll do is we'll manipulate it. So the first one is capitalize. So the first method, capitalize, so capital, lice it will treat the string like a sentence and capitalize the first letter so if i run this nothing should happen because the first letter is already capitalized but if i were to make this t a lowercase and run it again then we see the t is uppercase and if i instead just remove the completely and leave quick if we run it we see quick becomes capitalized so it just takes the first character and it makes it uppercase so very very simple so the next one we'll do is lower. So what lower will do is it will take all the characters in the string and it will turn them into lowercase. So if I run this, so lower, if I run this, we'll see that we have a lowercase t down here, whereas in the original sentence, we have an uppercase t. So if I were to make some of these uppercase, like quick brown box and run this again, we see everything comes out as lowercase. So it's pretty easy to understand this, but we also have the ability to use upper. So as you can imagine, if lower makes everything lowercase, then upper will make everything uppercase. And let me comment that one out. So now all the characters in the string are uppercase. And of course, it depends on if the character itself can be uppercase or lowercase. If you put in a number, for instance, nothing's going to change because there's no such thing as an uppercase number. But for letters, there are definitely uppercase letters. So that's pretty simple. Let's try another one. Let's try swap case. So my stir, and then we'll use swap case. And what it does this time is for everything that is capitalized in the original string, it makes it lowercase. And for everything that is, um, Lowercase, it makes it uppercase. So we see it just reverses everything. So it's pretty ugly, but this is what it does. It swaps the case quite literally. And then the final one, when it comes to changing the case of the characters, I will talk about title. So I'll run title. And now we see the first letter of every word becomes capitalized. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Every single one is uppercase for the first character. So these are very simple to understand and to use. So if you ever have the need to change the case on any of your strings, you may want to consider uh, using those. So now the next ones I wanna talk about are the methods that are used for searching inside of a string in a way. So these aren't searches in a sense where like it will look into a string and find like every instance of whatever you pass in. It basically just finds one instance so it can either find the first one or the last one or you know starting after some point but for these I'll just focus on the first and the last so before I get to that first we can do like a count so it won't return the locations but it will definitely return the number so um, my string has the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so the word the appears twice so if I search for account of let's say he because uh the t in the first the is uppercase so if i just search for he and print this i see two because the letters h e appear twice in the string and if i look for something else let's say um o v o g i don't see anything yeah, I don't see anything else. So what's special about this sentence is that it uses every single letter in the alphabet. That's probably why uh, you've seen it in typing programs, but I don't see any other repeated characters. So what I'll do is I'll just search for a single character. So let's say the letter O. 
So if I look at the string, I see one, two, three, four instances of O, but three are lowercase. So when we run count on it, we get three. And if I change this O to an uppercase O and run this again, I get one because there's only one uppercase. So that's how count works. It basically just looks in the string and looks for an exact match on the characters. So now we have some that can be true or false. So we can use Meister and then we can have ends with and starts with. So ends with, if I demonstrate this, you'll understand starts with. So ends with dog and a period. So if I run this, we see true. If I take away that period and run it again, it's false. So basically it's just looking at the very end of the string and determining if the characters that you passed in match exactly with the end of the string. So when I have that period there, uh, it's true. But when I take away the period, it's false because the period actually ends the string. So if I do the same thing with starts with, uh, it's the same process, but instead of starting at the end, it starts at the beginning. So starts with, if I say the, this should be false because it's a lowercase t, but if I make it uppercase, we see it's true. So very, very simple to use ends with and starts with. So now let's try find. So print and we'll say meister find, and we're going to look for he. So I have two instances of a he, but we see that it returns the first one. So this T is at zero and then H is at one. So let me look for something that is further along in the string quick. We see four. So zero, one, two, three, four, and it starts quick. So in addition to find, we have our find. So let's try he again and do this. And this time it's 32. So the way this works, it starts at the end and it goes in and it looks for the first instance starting from the end. So here's where it finds he the second time. So find alone looks for the first instance and then the second find, our find, starts from the end. And then we have index. And we get one. And then we have our index. And we get 32. So you're probably wondering, what's the difference between find and our index, or a find and index? So let me demonstrate that. So I have find he and find quick. So let me change this to something that's not in the string, so cat. So this one will be cat and that one will be cat. So find cat, find index, we'll run it. And we see find returns negative one for the index, whereas uh, index here returns an error, this value error, substring not found. So if I comment this out and run this again, we see find returns negative one, so it didn't find the cat at all. And if I comment this one out and bring back index, then we see an error. So that's basically the difference between the two. Find will return negative one if it doesn't find anything, whereas index and our index will raise an error. So those are pretty easy to understand as well. So now the next methods I want to talk about are methods that kind of categorize the string. So what I mean by that is it tells you what's in the string roughly. So for this, I won't use um, this example sentence. I'll just create strings here. So if I have something like one, two, three, and I say is al num, and I run this, we see true. So what this means is, is this alphanumeric? Meaning, does this have either numbers or letters in it? If I add like a hash right there and run it, we see it becomes false because it has another type of character in it. So this only supports numbers and letters for true. Anything else, it will return false for is al num, just like that. So we have similar ones and we can say is alpha. So I'll comment this out. If I run is alpha, we see false because is alpha is looking for characters that are in the alphabet. So ABC, ABC. If I run this, we get true because 
and the alphabet. And something that's similar is is ASCII. So is ASCII, it just tells you if the characters are ASCII based or not. So certain Unicode characters wouldn't work in that. So I'm not gonna go through all of them, but we have ones like is decimal, uh, is digit, is lower, is numeric, is space, is title, and is upper. And based off what we've done before, and based off the names, you should be able to figure out exactly how these work. So the next methods I'll talk about are really simple formatting methods, basically just uh, moving things around in the string. So uh, we'll use my stir again, and this time we'll use center. And what I want to do is I'll type in 50. So I'll run this and I'll print it. And what we see is there is a space uh, from the beginning. So if I change this, like if I add another character here, so by default it's space. If I add dashes, uh, I see dashes around the string. So what this does is the first number means uh, how big the final string is going to be. So I want to take up 50 characters of space. And then what I'm saying with center is for everything on either side, after centering the text that I have in the string, put this empty space around it. So by default, it's a space, but uh, right now I'm using a dash. So if I change this from 50 to 100, we'll see more space around the string. So the string is even longer. It's longer so it can take up 100 characters and we see it's centered in the middle. So this is pretty easy to understand. And of course, if I don't pass anything, then it's just going to use white space. So there are a couple of methods that are similar. So we have um, L just, so we'll print this. And to make it a little easier, we'll put the dash again so we can see what's going on. So, Left justify, L just, just keeps everything on the left, but it adds space to the right. And of course, there is the method R just that does the same thing. It just moves everything over to the right and puts spaces on the left, just like that. Next, we have the methods that will take things out of the string. So basically, removing white space from the string, this is what you would use it for. So let me copy uh, my string here again, and I'll just put some empty space around it. So if I want to left strip it, so we'll say myster dot l strip and run this, and we see it takes away all the white space on the left. So you can't see it happening on the right, but if I change this to r strip then it kind of looks the same. It just took off the white space. So it's hard to see in the console, but we see there are spaces still to the left. And if we just use strip, then it takes away white space from both the beginning and the end of the string. So the last type of methods that I want to show you in this video are methods to split up the string. So you have partition and you have split and you also have split lines. So let's go through uh, each one. So we have Meister, so print and then Meister and we'll start with partition. And we'll pass in a space. So let's see what happens when we run this. So what partition does is it returns three pieces for you. It returns everything before it finds the first instance of whatever you pass into partition, it passes the partition character itself or characters, and it passes everything else after those characters. So we see the, and then a space, and then quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So if we change this to like brown and run this, we see the quick and then brown, and then fox jumps over the lazy dog. And then we also have our partition. And this time we'll use he, and we'll compare the results for both because he appears twice in the string. So let's run it. And this time we see T followed by he, and then the rest of the string. And then right partition does a similar thing, but it starts from the end of the string and it goes back. So we see he here gets partition and lazy dog 
is on the right hand side and the quick brown fox jumps over t is on the left hand side so if you ever have the need to get one character out and know what comes before and after you want to use partition and it returns a tuple for you so now let's look at split so meister split and let's pass in a space clear that out so what this does is instead of giving you before and after it will just find every instance of the character that you pass in and then by default it's a space but i pass it in directly it finds every instance of the character and when it does it splits the string at that point so if you have multiple cases of the character that you pass into split it will split the string multiple times so the reason why space is, is default is because that's what people mostly use but if you want to use something else like if i want to pass in key instead of space then we see this is what it looks like but of course in this particular example space would be more useful and of course it removes the character that you pass in or characters that you pass in unlike partition which keeps them so if you need to keep the characters that um, get found you may want to use partition if you want to get rid of them then you may want to use split it just depends on what you're doing but just by knowing that these exist uh, when it comes time for you to do something you'll know what you want to do and then the last one that i want to show you is split lines so split lines is very uh, easy to understand so uh, this time i'll create a string And let's see how well our split lines works on this. So I'll just call this text and we'll print uh, text dot split lines. And we see that Anthony created pretty printed in and then we get a comma and then another value in the string the year 2015. So by splitting on the lines, what it's doing is it's finding every instance of a new line. So in this particular case, I just have one and it's splitting on that new line. So this is really useful when you're uh, importing a bunch of text that is just formatted in the case of new lines, like a CSV file. So for every line, you put it in its own element in the list. And then for every new line, you create a new element. So it's very easy to uh, use and it's very useful when you're processing things from like files that don't have any particular formatting that is useful uh, right away in a programming language, but it does have new lines. So these are most of the string methods. Uh, you may notice I have ignored join, um, but that's a really common one. And I feel like it's not like the other ones, given that it's probably the one that's used the most. But you know, if you want me to talk about join, I suppose I can talk about join in another video. But um, I wanted to cover these. And I didn't cover all the options on all the methods, but from watching this video, you should have an idea of what is possible now uh, with strings if you didn't already know. So if you have any questions about working with strings in Python, you can leave a comment down below. If you want to get this code, I'll uh, post this to GitHub and I'll put a link in the description so you can get the code if you want. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.